Along the Masakamba Highway in Chirura District lies the 21 square mile Nshara farm, tucked away in the distant plains of Chirura District. This piece of land belongs to the National Animal Genetic Resource Center, Nagrik. However, fears have abounded that some individuals are scheming to grab this piece of land. When I visited Inshara Ranch, I found a Greek officials fencing off the piece of land. This came barely after about 10 square miles of the land was grabbed. Inside the ranch are homes of encroachers. Amongst those accused of encroaching on the ranch is an employee of the Electoral Commission and an army officer. The encroachers at the behest of influential people have parceled out these pasture lands for personal gain. NTV was told that some of the wells meant for livestock in the ranch were also grabbed. Cattle belonging to Shara Ranch has been blocked from the wells. The ranch is teeming with wildlife including zebras wandering across the grasslands of Nshara Ranch, supposed to be sanctuary for the breeding of Asher in Jazzy Frisian cattle. The executive director of Nagrik, Dr. Charles Lagu, is concerned about the encroachment. A result of this encroachment is the dwindling land sizes for our animals. Uh, our crossbreeding programs are affected because we have bulls that come from encroachers. Perhaps you've passed in Sanga Trading Center, a hub of roast meat in Chiruhura district. A kilo of meat here is sold at 11,000 shillings, which is expensive for many to afford, yet it is one of the best sources of protein and iron. If the farms in this place were properly utilized for breeding and improving livestock, it could sustain the local beef and dairy industry. This part of the farm was given to some individuals to breed the long-horned cattle. However, I discovered that they were instead growing bananas on part of this land. Not far from the rickety and rusty offices of the ranch is an expanse that was encroached on by some individuals to grow maize and other crops. We also went to Rehengeri Ranch, whose grasslands are often scorched by the punishing sun. In the compound lies an old truck rusting away, portraying gears of neglect. We found trainees on the ranch, who carried some poles for fencing the ranch. However, we were told that some of the poles were diverted and sold for firewood by one of the ranch managers. One of the farm managers, Didas Muzora, is grazing his goats on the ranch. Why are you allegedly encroaching on the government land, yet you're supposed to be protecting it? But do you admit that what you are doing is wrong? Yes. Huh? Yes, it is wrong. How are you going to crack a whip against the encroachers, yet you have encroachers within your staff? I have given them one week to either take their goats somewhere else from the farm, or they sell them off. Some farm managers are allegedly hiring the land in the ranch to cattle keepers. Each livestock farmer pays at least 50,000 shillings for each cow a year to the officials. It is estimated that there were over 6,000 cows on the ranch, which translates into 300 million shillings every year. It is also alleged that over 15 out of 25 square miles of this ranch was hired out at 200,000 shillings per acre every year. One square mile is equivalent to 640 acres. When multiplied by 200,000 shillings, it is equivalent to about 1 billion 920 million shillings. One square mile is equivalent to 640 acres. When multiplied by 200,000 shillings, it is equivalent to about 1 billion 920 million shillings. The ranch management has received threats from army and police officers who want to encroach on this land. Where we had predicted that the uh, uh, staff is associated with the renting, some of them have been dismissed. Some of them have been interdicted. Once you get the cows, you see somebody calling you saying, ah, I'm major so and so. My animals have been arrested there. What, what, like some of that kind, something of that kind. And, then, and in that process, what do you do? No, normally, when we do that, we give them a warning. As we waited at the ranch offices, we found private guards holding 140 heads of cattle belonging to police constable Charles Kamanya, who has been warned on several occasions against encroaching on the land. 
At the vantage point, we were able to film this incident without being noticed as Kamanya confronted the guards who later arrested him. He's supposed to be signing for the third time to promise that he will not encroach again. And at the same time, the in charge are saying that they could easily arrest him today uh, as a, a deterrent measure. <laughs> Come on, I just wanted to know uh, from you, why have you been encroaching on government land? Come on, why have you be, uh, been encroaching on government land? Yes, sir. He was arrested and he was charged with uh, criminal trespass. So the file went to the office of the state attorney and I think uh, uh, when I talked to the district CID officer, he's appearing on bond but he's on suspension and, uh, and, and they are expecting to charge him to court. Uh, this coming week under uh, our CRB 146 of 2019. According to our sources, whenever these uh, encroachers would come into Ruhenjere farm, they would mix their cattle with these ones that belong to government and you find at some point uh, they remove the tags that are main identifier on the ears and trod away with several heads of cattle. And it is the same reason as to why they are suspecting that you find a hundred cattle with just ten calves. Now we have solved that problem, we have weekly reporting, we have put the officers in charge to do weekly census on these animals. But also we give targets. If you have a particular number of reproductive herd, we give particular targets, that's what we expect in terms of births by this period of time. So if you fail to miss those targets, then you are reprimanded. This part of the farm neighbors Ruhenjere Army Barracks. These are the makeshift structures which were left behind by the encroachers before they were sent away. It is believed that um, Nagrik officials found Majera with about 150 goats and he has been in charge of the goats at the government ranch. And he has been allegedly heading a cartel of 200 men of people who come in such a place settled for so many years, uh, like this one, it's believed they have been here for about 10 years. They rear goats, rear cattle, and also plant crops competing with the animals which are in the ranch. Part of this land has also been occupied by a pumpkin garden. I asked the farm manager what he's doing to halt the encroachment. From the time you found these encroachers and they are cultivating square miles of land on the farm that you are supposed to be managing, what did you do about it? As I told you, I was a, a junior staff. And so then after you were promoted? Just of recent, last month. No more cultivators and no more encroaching on government lands. They should all leave. And at some point, if they fail, all the animals will be branded with the Nagrik brands. President Museven gave part of this land to some individuals to preserve and improve the Ankole Longhorn cattle. However, Okweta says the presidential directives were not followed to the letter. Much as he was given, he would, not, he would not just come and allocate himself. He would come and we would be the one to allocate him and say, you be here. But for him, he just came and chose where to be. We also visited the family said to have been evicted from their land over five years ago. It is alleged that they came with 40 cows but now have over 300 heads. It is alleged that some belong to the president's brother. Toyota Turukumanya Bakaijana Katevari Rogo, Avobar Kubingar Henger, it was a Hotuamuganda, Tarumun Toyna Henteza Toyota. In Entebbe town is the National Animal Genetic Resource Center in Data Bank. Here, cattle for beef and dairy are bred using artificial insemination. But why can't livestock be bred in areas where government has ranches? One of the strategic plans is focusing on community breeding. To use these ranches as a center, as a nucleus, to help improve the breeds, the cattle. At this piece of land, adjacent to the airport, the colonialists used to cross-breed cattle here. There was also a veterinary training institute, now occupied by police aviation. 
In 2013, the land was subdivided to allow the expansion of the Entebbe International Airport. Nagrik only remained with 73 hectares. Of this land, about 30 acres lies in the hands of Entebbe Zamugulu traditional group. The government comes up with development projects in various areas. There is always a group of schemers who go in those very places, buy land, and then later claim to be compensated with colossal sums of money. It is alleged that a group of about 50 people, when they heard that Entebbe Airport was going to be expanded, came and claimed 50 acres of this land and say they have a traditional heritage and they are taking care of their spirits in this area. They claim ownership, but it is alleged that they are being used by influential people to grab this piece of land. In Njeru Town Council, that lies on the Kampala Ginger Highway, is another government-owned ranch. Perched on top of the hill are dilapidated offices of the ranch. At the foot of it lies a beehive of activity. Behind me there is a detached of UPDF that is manning security of the Nile Bridge stationed here at Injeru Stock Farm. And of course we've been told uh, that um, the soldiers who are manning security the other side for the people who are uh, carrying out with construction at the land that has been encroached on, they have a list of individuals who are not supposed to get close to where they are, you know. That when they appear on the ground, we beat them, we break their ribs, they go to police and they report the assault case. We've been told even the, at the livestock farm or the management in this very place, they've been told that no one should ever cross to the other side because formerly there was an attempt to grab this very land but uh, they managed to at least put up some force and whenever they would try to bring uh, people who are the constructors they would arrest them but this time round that is why they are using the army to scare away almost everyone to back off we were warned that soldiers were guarding the area where shred glasses uganda limited company is constructing a factory It is alleged that Justice Minister Major General Kahindo Tafili has interest on this piece of land. This is after one of the land titles bore the name of the Justice Minister. They said that here they have come to introduce themselves to the soldiers, not to the manager. They have no business with the manager because for them they have the land title. Yeah, because I saw one of the titles, one of the titles, but uh, it had your name. Yes, the title has my name. So, and uh, the, uh, the government claims that it was part of the ranch. Listen, that title. Wow, well, how did you going to find out how government got that land? Mm -hmm. How did I get that land? Mm -hmm. I don't know. I am the Minister of Justice. Mm -hmm. so by the time I do something like that, I buy that land. I have done due diligence. The ranch managers have petitioned the Commission of Inquiry led by Justice Catherine Bamgemenele to halt this encroachment. On 24th November 2018, Bamgemenele's team toured Njeru Ranch. On the same day, the town clerk Njeru approved a plan for Shirej Glass Uganda Limited to carry on with development without obtaining a commencement note. The town clerk on 23rd January 2019 wrote another letter rescinding his position after he noticed that this had been done in error. Dr. Noel Baguma the acting manager of Njeru Stock Farm says they have been threatened. They can tell us that when you don't leave this land, you can lose your life. The next day we made another attempt to verify if it is true that the soldiers were guarding the construction site. Right now we're just trying to make an attempt to reach where the contested land is. That is on block 295 of the Njeru Stock Farm. Um, we don't know what is going to happen when we reach, but um, we were warned that there are men in uniform. Those are the soldiers who are hiding with the sugar cane nearby where they are dumping the, uh, material on the, on the very contested land. It was only as we returned that we managed to film this footage which shows UPDF on the site. Just next to the ranch is another chunk of land fenced off by some individuals. It is alleged that a police officer also has built a house on this piece of land belonging to Njeru Ranch. Plush houses dot the area that was once part of the ranch. It is alleged that most of the people who came and settled on this uh, bigger chunk of uh, Njeru Ranch acquired the land or ownership 
around 2013 and it was doled out uh, by the Jeru Town Council and that is according to the allegations that we are getting from the locals here. And as you can see, these are new structures, meaning these people are not even scared of any state of affairs apparently. But the major question that remains is why haven't the relevant authorities taken action against such impunity? I wanted to know from Edward Musoke, the physical plan and Jeru Town Council, how people acquired plots of land here. Court pronounced itself that uh, the, 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 the true owners of uh, plot 345 were, were, were actually not the direct descendants of Ham Mokasa, but rather the descendants of his brothers. Those are Ernest Seru and uh, Katolu Kwaju and the rest. So that's, that explains the reason why um, there is an encroachment. Njeru Town Council blames the management of Njeru Ranch for failing to demarcate their boundaries. Until that interest in knowing where their, their boundaries are is met, they will not know exactly where the land passes. Uh, what we only need to do is we can do uh, a reopening of the boundaries to establish the actual size. Because this was done and we are facts on the ground. NTV has also learned that vital land title documents were burnt at Njeru Town Council offices to get rid of evidence. According to police spokesperson Fred Nanga, the fire was not accidental. And uh, out of the four samples, there are two samples where we, there, were, there were traces of uh, petrol and paraffin hydrocarbons out of the four. Now, the other two did not contain any of the hydrocarbons, which implies that paraffin was used. In northern Uganda, government has 50 square miles of ranch land that is also not properly utilized. Gravity Investment Limited is a group of 12 former NRM leaning MPs who are in possession of 12 square miles of land for livestock business. These include Stephen Tashobia, who is a commissioner with the Electoral Commission, Frederick Rihindi, a commissioner of the Land Probe, Ekuma George Stephen, John Mulumba, Kawakumba Masiko, Sarah Patience Simpabwa, Oleru Huda Abason, Biraro Ephraim, Emmanuel Lumala Dombo, Muhumuza David, Kasure Robert Sebunya, and Kabahenda Flavia Baburoro. They claim that they were given the land to carry out animal breeding. We applied and received an allocation. When you look at the allocation of that land, it looks, um, it may seem as a handshake beyond the elbow, especially looking at the, the regime in power trying to dole out what belongs to the public, to its party members. What do you say about that? For us, we are private people who have come together and we have money we want to invest. And we are looking for investment opportunities. Would you ask such a question when an opportunity comes? Did you ever invite also the opposition members to be part of this kind of initiative? The others dropped off because they could not meet the capital threshold. I asked Ofono Pondo why government sherry picks some individuals to reward with public resources meant for the good of all. You want to insist on the line of NRM, and this is not the first time. The government of Uganda got the livestock farm of Entebbe and degazetted it and is expanding the airport. Is that NRM? So this is not the first ranch or livestock farm that is being given away. But what needs to be done to reverse this massive land grab? As uh, government servers and servants of the people, we must always do the right thing. There must be value for money. We must be vigilant. We must be uh, serious, patriotic. We shall be nationalistic. With the favorable climate for the livestock industry, Uganda has the capacity to sustain a flourishing dairy and beef industry. But as long as cartels and powerful individuals continue to grab tracts of land under the guise of development projects, there will be no land left to graze livestock. Sudil Yerhanga, NTV.